All right, so I wanted to give you an overview of, um, of my workflow with Console One. Console One is a software hardware system by SoftTube that allows you to have hardware control over like a channel strip and, and some basic DAW level control. Um, it's really helpful. It's, it's really changed my, my whole workflow, especially the, the mixing process. Um, I think uh, the only, only downside is you're limited to SoftTube and UAD um, plugins as, uh, as the channel strip. And I wanted to open that up and be able to use um, any channel strip I wanted. But mainly, I just wanted to be able to leverage this controller because it's an incredible controller. The, I love these, these encoders. I love the layout and, and the feedback and everything. It, it just feels great. So um, the way that that's accomplished in Reaper is through a really great script by Benjamin Klum, uh, who goes by Helga Boss, uh, which is called Relearn, Relearn 2. Um, and it allows you to basically take, these things are outputting, um, really basic MIDI 0 through 127, um, CCs, or in its native mode, it's, it's sending a uh, decrement and inc increment, uh, sysx values, uh, which I'm still trying to figure out how to get those to work, um. But in its basic MIDI mode, it works fine. And Benjamin's helped a ton with with uh, with the scripts that it takes to to translate these all um, into into normal endless rotary encoders, which is which is kind of the mode that that's the most useful for me. Um, so uh, it has two modes, two layers. It has the simple. This is the channel strip mode, and this this works exactly the way that you expect. Um, I you know I use PSP and Finistrip most of the time. So, you know, you can instantiate that. You can see it's it's on this channel. And now all of these encoders are actually um, doing stuff behind the scenes. If you want to see it, it's just like uh, console one where you, you hit the display and now you can see the interface. And, you know, it's, it's the same stuff. This is the EQ, EQ on off, compressor. This is the EQ type, compressor type. Uh, I, I change shape to just be the input module. This is this controls all the the functions of the um, of the preamp, um, and then you know of course you have the filters, which is mostly what I end up using during this this process. Um, volume and pan are obviously those are native Reaper uh, volume and pan. Uh, I I made input gain. I moved that over to here uh, because I wanted to use this as a track selector. I just think that's more useful um, for my workflow. Uh, so yeah, that, I mean, this could be anything if, you know, if you show that, whoops, I gotta go to that track. Oh yeah, that's the problem. I'm still trying to get the, uh, the sensitivity of this to be exactly the way that I want it. Sometimes it skips tracks. So you can, um, you know, you can delete a plugin. Uh, you can add a different one. If, if you don't want that, you can add like, you know, pro Q3 or whatever, and it, it just picks it up. Uh, Benjamin's script basically is, is smart enough that you can tell it the name of the plugin and it'll detect if that if that plugins up and it'll it'll change these mappings and you can see uh, as you move this you'll see that the actual um, the corresponding value is uh, is being moved and this thing the reason this is freaking out is this I have this set to last touch so even if I've never um, you know if, if I have a plugin uh, let's see put in like a synth or something oh and this is uh, the Heta track templates. Um, which allows me to have images, you know, I can make little icons for, for my most used plugins. So the cool thing about Last Touch, uh, oops, it did two. That's the other thing I'm trying to figure out how to fix that. Um, so the other thing, you know, like if I move this, now this is, this is mapped immediately to uh, the Last Touch parameter. So this is, this is cut off now. So I don't have to map every synth. I can at least have one main parameter at a time just, just to pick up mode. Um, so anyways, that's all pretty much what you'd expect. You know, this is, these are all some, I kind of added in some functions of like, if you have a floating effect uh, outside of the effects window, this will do, this will combine it back into the effects window. And then this is show and hide. Um, a few functions like uh, if you put PSP and you show it, this will switch uh, the preamp modes. Um, just a little stuff like that. This will go, this selects the track. Um, yeah, I think it's it's pretty much what you'd expect. Uh, so, the other I, I think the really cool added benefit of Relearn having conditional uh, logic is basically you can have these layers. So you say mode, and now I'm in the second layer. Now I'm in edit mode, and now all those controls have gone away. I you know I kept track select, but like um, now these all have different meanings. This this tape down here is is what um, what they mean now. So so this is uh, horizontal zoom. Vertical zoom. Uh, this will set the grid division. Um, this will 
move the cursor if you want to scan around. Um, this is split. So, you know, you can, I, this, I find this really helpful for drum editing. Um, you can do splits and then you can select, this will select, you know, the, the uh, media item. And then this is really helpful. This is a slip mode. So this is slip editing. So, you know, I'm just scanning through all the contents of this wave and, uh, and you know, you can say like, oh, I want a snare here instead or, or a hi-hat. So I think it's going to be most useful for drum editing just because that's the most like tedious for me. Um, but, you know, like if you do, this is really helpful. Once you have a split off MK Slicer, uh, you can slice. And then you can stay zoomed in. And now I can jump through all my my items without ever having to zoom out and make like really, you know, just really fast like edits. Um, so I think it'll be helpful for that. Um, this right now is cursor, but, you know, like I was thinking maybe I'd keep volume and keep these the same in both modes, but I'm still not really sure. But basically this just allows me to have these two layers um, and uh, and allows me to utilize these because, you know, usually I can only use these for the as the um, the channel strip controls, but it's really useful to have the second layer and have an editing mode. And, you know, these could be anything that you wanted, obviously. And that's uh, just accomplished through multiple instances of... Uh, of relearn one is listening for um let's see maybe i'll zoom in one of them's listening for this and you can see it flips these instances i don't know if this is the best way to do it but that's the way that kind of made sense to me and that way you can program this these are all their own mappings that's layer two and then layer one is all its own mappings and this is the listener this is just basically listening for uh for the switch and, uh, and then I have other stuff for like the fader. I have the, the console one fader over here. So that's listening, that's, that's op operating in a, in a whole other mode. And then um, I have one for the 49SL and then one for the Launchpad MIDI. This is, uh, the cool thing is, this is the Genelec um, system. So this is the volume knob. And then these are mapped <clears throat> to like mute. Oh, whoops, I have to have this problem. I have to have GLM running. There you go. Um, so these these basically will become MIDI mapped to. Let's see. Get, see that's you see the red light on the on the monitor. That's mute. That's dim. This is sub on and off. Um, so it just allows you. You know, relearn is really cool because it allows you to like integrate. Uh, use a, a single controller to have multiple functions because that that's controlling the Genelec, but then now this is controlling uh, Reaper's playback. So this is play, record, um, and metronome. So it's just really helpful to be able to like multitask with with each controller and have each controller do um, have multiple functions. And then this, I'm still mapping this, but this is the uh, mechanical keyboard version. Um, this is basically, I'm, I've gotten into a mode where I don't need a keyboard anymore. I just need this plus um, plus this, and I can pretty much do everything I need to uh, within Reaper. So yeah, it's been a, it's been a really helpful uh, workflow, and I appreciate all the work Benjamin has put into this and all the help he's given me uh, figuring out how to <laughs> integrate all these scripts because I have no clue what I'm doing with that stuff. So it's been, uh, it's been awesome to be able to get this thing to, to work finally.